Hey what's up guys, so 2016 was a pretty good year for game releases. We got great games such as Doom, Overwatch, Uncharted 4, and we finally got games like The Last Guardian and Final Fantasy XV, which have been in development hell for like 10 years. But now that 2016 is over, we can finally start getting hyped about the games coming out in 2017. There are so many hype ass games that have been announced for this year, and there's probably much more that we don't even know about yet. So here are my top 20 most anticipated games of 2017. Keep in mind, this is my own personal list, and I'm ranking it from least hyped to most hyped. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and start off with number 20, Ghost Recon Wildlands. When this game was first revealed back at E3 2015, the trailer had me super fucking hyped dude. I really enjoyed the setting and the premise of the game. However, ever since that first trailer was shown, the game has started to feel more and more like a Division or a Destiny kind of game. Which isn't necessarily bad, just not my cup of tea you know. This has made me significantly less excited, especially when you consider Ubisoft's track record for overpromising games and then downgrading them. It's because of all of these faults that the games dropped down so low to number 20 for me. However, I might still give it a shot considering that me and my friend Aaron are constantly looking for some kind of co-op game to play together. Moving on to number 19, Gravity Rush 2. I played the first Gravity Rush forever ago on Vita, and I enjoyed the gameplay quite a bit. I thought it was a cool idea and I was having fun with it. But for whatever reason, I stopped playing it after chapter 14 even though I was having fun. The more and more I think about it, the more I want to go back to it. Especially now that it's on PS4. I've been avoiding a lot of Gravity Rush 2's footage, mostly because I don't want to spoil myself on the first game. But from the little I've seen and what I've heard people saying about it, I'm pretty excited. Something I've heard about in this game is something called Gravity Styles, which is apparently making yourself lighter or heavier using different kind of gravity. You can also apparently use this to teleport and fuck with the environment, which this sounds pretty hype dude, like I cannot wait to get back into Gravity Rush just in time to play the sequel. Number 18, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. The Resident Evil series has never really been a huge part of my love for games. I've played really short bits and pieces of some of the previous games, mainly Resident Evil 4. However, Resident Evil 7 looks fucking sick dude. The first person gameplay makes me feel like it's a fresh start for the series, and even though I won't really get some of the references and tie-ins to the other games, I still feel like I can jump into the series through Resident Evil 7. Not to mention you can play the whole game in VR which sounds pretty good to me. I also love the build up to this game's reveal. Showing people the kitchen demo and nobody suspecting that it's actually Resident Evil 7, then when they showed the reveal trailer at E3 2016, I still had no idea what it was. Then we got a shot of the 7 slowly zooming in, I was still very confused, then all of a sudden we see the words Resident Evil Biohazard. I also love how the name ties in both titles of the series. This feels like a fresh start for Resident Evil and I feel like it's a pretty good entry point for me to get into the series. Moving on to number 17, Valkyria Revolution. I don't know much about this next entry, but last year I played Valkyria Chronicles Remastered and I absolutely loved it. From the gameplay to the characters, everything was amazing. I know that this game isn't related to any of the previous Valkyria Chronicles, but I have faith that they can still deliver a good story with likeable characters. I'm on board with this game because of how much fun I had with Valkyria Chronicles Remastered. Even though the gameplay of Valkyria Revolution looks a lot different to that of Valkyria Chronicles, I feel like if it's anywhere near as fun, I'll still like it a lot. I know there's currently a Japanese demo out for this game, but I haven't had any hands-on time with it. This game is also coming out for Vita, which is always an added bonus for me. Number 16, Guardians of the Galaxy The Telltale Series. Not much is currently known about the game. We don't even know which Guardians are going to be in the game. I constantly hear people talk about how they're burnt out on Telltale games, and I completely understand that. They work on like 20 games at a time and they never fix their goddamn engine. However, I skip a lot of them. I've only really played The Walking Dead, Wolf Among Us, and Batman. I also don't play them as they're coming out, so I don't have those long gaps in between waiting for an episode. I like to binge them all at once. So I feel like, because of the way I play these games, I'm still not tired of the Telltale formula yet. I love Guardians of the Galaxy, and I feel like Telltale could completely nail the humor of it. But seriously though, fix your fucking engine before this game comes out. Number 15, South Park The Fractured But Whole. I haven't watched South Park in many years, but I always really liked the humor and thought it was really funny. I missed out on Stick of Truth when it originally came out, but everything I've seen from it is hilarious. I'm especially excited for The Fractured But Whole because I love the idea behind making fun of the MCU and the DCEU. Everything I've seen from the character's origin story to the scene where they plan out the phases on the blackboard has had me laughing so hard I feel like it's going to be a really good time dude. Plus, the fact that you can pre-order it to get the Stick of Truth for free is pretty good and I'll definitely be doing that just to play through Stick of Truth before Fractured But Whole comes out. Also, I love the title of the game. It gives me a really stupid grin on my face every time I hear it. Number 14, Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Uncharted 4 was a great game. I had a lot of fun playing it last year, but I felt like something was missing. Something that had been missing since the second game. 
It was missing Chloe, man. Probably one of my favorite characters in the Uncharted games. Chloe is finally back in her own standalone story. One of the main reasons I'm excited for Uncharted The Lost Legacy is the fact that you get to play as Chloe. Chloe, in my opinion, is one of the best parts of Uncharted 2, and getting to play as her is really exciting. From the gameplay demo we've seen, we got to see that Chloe actually has some history with one of Uncharted 4's main villains, Nadine. And this opens up a bunch of questions about Nadine's past and what kind of relationship she had with Chloe. Even though this isn't a full game, I really enjoyed Uncharted 4, and I'm glad I get to play another Uncharted game with Chloe in it. Alright, so number 13, Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. To me, Nino Kuni is in a very similar situation to Gravity Rush, where I played it a lot, had a lot of fun with the gameplay, and then ended up dropping it for some reason. The first Nino Kuni had a great battle system, a good story, and amazing art and cutscenes done by Studio Ghibli, and I really enjoyed the time I spent with it. However, I hit a point where I felt underleveled and I was too lazy to try and fix that. I highly regret not finishing this game, but now that the sequel was announced, I feel like I have a pretty good excuse to finally go back to it. Nino Kuni 2 looks really good from the art and the small bits of gameplay we've seen. The characters all have interesting design and the music sounds amazing. We've seen a small glimpse of combat, but from what I remember from the first game, this looks very similar, which I'm on board for. I'm very interested to see what level 5 has to offer, and I'm definitely going to be checking this out when it's released. Number 12 is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It feels like this game was announced forever ago. Originally set to be released on the Wii U, it's now also going to be released on Nintendo Switch as well. I've been avoiding seeing too much of this game. I avoided watching those long, hour-long clips of gameplay from E3. I keep hearing people talk about how they're tired of seeing the game, and I feel like I still have a fresh look on it. Sure, I'm tired about hearing that it got delayed, and then delayed, and then delayed. But in all honesty, it's probably for the better. Delays are usually good for games, so I'm not really worried about that. The main reason I'm excited to play this game is getting to play it on the go or at home whenever I want on a new Nintendo console, but more on that later. Moving on to number 11, Injustice 2. I really like fighting games, and one of my favorite series ever is Mortal Kombat. I have full confidence towards the team at Netherrealm to make this game be great. There's certain things about the first Injustice that I didn't particularly like, but I often find myself re-downloading it just to play a few matches. One of my favorite things about new fighting games is seeing characters get revealed as we get closer to launch. Getting a trailer drop for one of the characters that you like is always the hypest thing ever, so I'm looking forward to getting more character announcements. After the success of Mortal Kombat X, I can't wait to see what Netherrealm are going to do next. But seriously, Ed Boon, give me Combat Pack 3 already. I really want to play a Scarlet. Halfway there at number 10, Horizon Zero Dawn. Ever since this game was announced, I've been insanely interested to learn more about the world and the lore around it. The art direction looks badass, the people look prehistoric, the game is post-apocalyptic, and there's robot dinosaurs everywhere. That sounds like a pretty badass mix if you ask me. I want to learn more about the story of what happened to civilization. How were the robot dinosaurs built? Who built them? Why are the humans so primitive and warrior-like? And I can't wait to spend countless hours exploring the world and answering these questions. This is a very different kind of game for the team over at Gorilla to be working on, and I think that in itself is very exciting. Alright, so number 9 is Prey. I know absolutely nothing about the previous Prey game, but goddamn does this one look fucking cool. First of all, the reveal trailer set the perfect tone. It was mysterious and creepy and I loved it. The game is being made by Arcane, who recently released Dishonored 2. Now even though the Dishonored 2 team and the Prey team aren't the same, one of the co-directors of the first Dishonored game is currently directing Prey. I love the first Dishonored, so if some of the guys from that team went over to work on Prey, I have a lot of confidence for this game. You get to absorb some pretty badass powers from the aliens that you defeat. You also get this gun that makes some bootleg-ass platforms for you to jump on. Overall, the game feels like Dead Space meets Bioshock, and that's pretty badass to me. Number 8, the Nintendo Switch. Although it isn't really technically a game, I still felt like I needed to include it. Nintendo hasn't really been looking too great in the console market for a while now, but after seeing the reveal of the Nintendo Switch, I feel like they still have what it takes to make a solid comeback. Seeing that a company as historic to video games as Nintendo has a chance to rise and succeed again is pretty hype, and I'm excited to see how the Switch works for them. I feel like the reveal trailer had really good messaging, it perfectly explained what the Switch was and wasn't confusing like the Wii U. I'm really excited to get to play games like Breath of the Wild and this mysterious new Mario game. There's been reports saying that the Switch is going to have a virtual console for GameCube games, which is probably one of the most amazing things I have ever heard in my life. I'm going to be able to play games like Double Dash, Melee, and Super Mario Sunshine on the go wherever I want dude. This console has a lot of potential to be something amazing and I'm very excited to see more. Moving in on number 7, Nier Automata. Holy shit dude, this game feels so good. Not too long ago, I played the demo for this game and I was amazed by how well this game felt. 
Not only was the gameplay amazing, but holy shit the music is mind blowing. Ever since I played through the demo, I've been constantly thinking about this game. I really want to go bust out my PS3, get a copy of the first Nier and play through it before Nier Automata comes out. I was already pretty interested in the game just by the art design and the vibe it was giving me from the trailers, but after playing the demo my hype went from 8 to 11. Seriously, you owe it to yourself to go play that demo. Number 6. Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue Kingdom Hearts is my favorite game series ever. I love these games so much, everything from the Disney magic to the characters interactions, everything is great. In this collection, we get Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, which was originally released for 3DS. When I played through this game, I thought it was fine. I had a lot of issues with it, but overall I enjoyed it. Getting a chance to replay it in HD is pretty cool, especially since now I get trophies so, you know, that's always a bonus. The collection also comes with Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep of Fragmentary Passage, which to be honest is way more exciting than Dream Drop Distance. It acts as a little bit of a demo for how Kingdom Hearts 3 will play, and if that wasn't enough to get you hyped, you get to play as the waifu Aqua. Finally, you get Kingdom Hearts Key Back Cover, which focuses on the story of the mobile game which I don't really play so that's pretty good for me. Moving into my top 5 games of 2017, we're gonna kick it off with Crash Bandicoot and Sane Trilogy. The Crash Bandicoot games are some of the first games I ever played. Crash Bandicoot Warped was one of the first games that was actually mine. Not an older siblings, not a cousins, it was mine. This series holds a lot of nostalgia for me, and when I heard that they were being remade from the ground up, I lost my shit. At PSX 2016, we got our first look at what the games are going to look like, and they look pretty damn good. After hearing people who have played it say that it feels just like the originals in terms of gameplay, has made me even more excited to play through the collection. Probably the most exciting thing about this is the fact that if it does well, maybe Activision will actually consider making more Crash games in the style of the original trilogy. Please guys, support this game, I need more Crash in my life. Number 4, Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix Yeah, yeah, I know, whatever. I know it's just a bunch of games that were previously released on PS3, that were previously on PS2 and a mess of other handhelds. And I know I already mentioned another Kingdom Hearts collection with an actual new experience in the form of 0.2. But come on guys, it's Kingdom Hearts, I can't not get excited about this. I can't wait to play through all of these games again on PS4 at 60 frames per second. I already platinumed all of them on PS3, so hopefully they have separate trophy lists so I can do it again. As I mentioned before, Kingdom Hearts is one of my favorite series, so the fact that I get to experience them all in one spot is pretty exciting. Coming in on number 3, Red Dead Redemption 2. I'd imagine this is a lot of people's number one. I think back to that week when Rockstar was just giving small teases leading up to the reveal trailer of Red Dead Redemption 2, and that was one of the most exciting weeks of video game news of 2016. From them changing their logo to red, to releasing a picture of 7 cowboy silhouettes off in the horizon, to finally releasing the title and the release window, and then finally giving us the trailer, that was one of the most exciting weeks of gaming news in 2016. I remember just exploding with excitement, waiting for Rockstar to reveal something new about Red Dead. All of the rumors and speculation about it being a prequel and being about Marston's gang sound really cool. So far my only issue is the title. A little piece of me gets triggered whenever I hear people refer to it as Red Dead 2. I would have much rather preferred Red Dead, some other R word, but hey, whatever. The point is we're getting another Red Dead game. We're getting pretty close to the end here with number 2, Persona 5. You see, every now and then I go through what I call Persona hype. This is when I cannot stop watching all the previous Persona openings and the trailers for Persona 5 and I just listen to Persona music for hours. This game is constantly on my brain and it kills me to know that it's already out in Japan and we just got another delay here. I can't wait to interact with all the characters and learn about them through the social links or co-ops or whatever the fuck they're called in this new game. I'm so excited I constantly consider platinuming Persona 4 Golden before this game comes out, but I know damn well that won't happen. Anyways, this game looks amazing and I can't wait to be playing it and have those moments when I wake up in the morning, start playing the game and then realize it's night again. I can't wait to fill out my Persona compendium, I can't wait to listen to the music while in battle, I can't wait to like choose which character I want to hang out with after class. Dude, so many things I cannot wait for for this game. Please just hurry up and release already. Please, no more delays. Please. And finally, my number one most anticipated game of 2017, Spider-Man PS4. So this game is a little bit of cheating considering it doesn't officially have a release date. It doesn't even have a release window for that matter. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'd know that I am extremely excited for this game and that Spider-Man is my all-time favorite superhero. I really want a really good mind-blowing Spider-Man game and I feel like this could be it. 
I've been really bummed out with previous Spider-Man games before, so hopefully this is the one that finally nails it. Again, nothing is confirmed for 2017, and I'm not going to go all out and get my hopes up until Insomniac officially say something about it, just so I don't get disappointed if it doesn't come out this year, but I still feel like there's a good chance it might. Insomniac, I am putting a lot of faith in you to finally give me the best Spider-Man game ever. So that was my top 20 games I am looking forward to in 2017. This list was pretty hard to make, first picking the 20 games and having to rank them was all pretty tough. In fact, I'm still not super sure about how the rankings turned up, but you know, whatever, the video had to come out eventually, you know? There's also so many games without release dates that might come out this year, but I didn't want to break the rules for all of those like I did with Spider-Man. So let me know what games you're shooting yourself for this year. Are you excited about any of the ones I put up on this list? Let me know all of that in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and share it with your friends. And if you really fucking love this video, I would suggest that you subscribe to see more videos just like it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an awesome 2017. And with all of that said, I'll talk to you guys next time.